James. How are you? I'm great, Kelly. How are you? I'm good, thanks. You uh, you were just, tell us what you were just doing. You were just outside. I, I was Canada's all- driver of the year finalist was what <laughs> doing what on his day well, off? I was at uh, I was at the barn this morning uh, for my brother Anthony jogging some babies and doing that. And then I left there and went right to my brother Curtis's and uh, was shoveling off his pond uh, to get it ready for uh, hopefully a game sometime this week. Uh, we were Mark McKelvey and I were shoveling it off, and then uh, Rob uh, Kyle Fellows came down and we were uh, putting some water to it and yeah. gonna give it a little flood tomorrow, and it'll be should be good to go. Is this a virgin pond? Like, have you used it for this purpose before or? Uh, no, we, we used it a little bit last year and I didn't get a whole lot of use out of it. But this year we've uh, we've been working it more, using it not really yet. So uh, <laughs> hoping hoping that it'll be good to go this week. Yeah. How do you get the surface nice and smooth, though? Well, I guess we, we haven't uh, mastered that, but Curtis, believe it or not, has created a Zamboni that we can kind of use. So uh, so this is our first uh, attempt with that. Uh, so uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we got it smooth. We just put water on it today to get right. the rest of the snow off it. But uh, yeah, we're going to hit it with the Zamboni tomorrow and see how it comes. Right. Awesome. Yeah. I can only imagine what the Zamboni looks like. That's, uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll send you a picture. <laughs> All right. That sounds good. All right. <laughs> Well, that's good. That actually uh, feeds very nicely into what I want to talk to you about today. But let's start um, by updating anyone who might not be aware. So we're a couple days out right now from the O'Brien Awards, and you are up for uh, in what has been a remarkable year for you. Uh, You're up as the uh, first time finalist for the Keith Waples Driver of the Year. I'm sure um, as you get closer to the date, are you getting more nervous? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm excited. I don't know about nervous, but just excited, you know, for the opportunity to be nominated. Uh, I've said it in a thousand interviews, but, you know, I like I, I really idolized a lot of these guys I race with and, you know, I, I have a ton of respect for them. So uh, I still hasn't really sunk in that I'm, you know, nominated for driver of the year and, and mm-hmm. considered, you know, by my peers or some of my peers and, and media <laughs> and everyone. But yeah. uh to be a driver of the year. So uh, hopefully, hopefully it goes my way. That's great. Well, congratulations in advance, whatever the outcome, congratulations on just a remarkable year. Okay. So I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about what makes a driver of the year, what kind of upbringing prepares one uh, for being at the top of your game in this game, in a game where um, even if you are at the top of your game, you're going to lose more than you're ever going to win. What kind of upbringing prepares someone for that? And you um, have had what I think is probably my worst nightmare ever uh, in essentially five brothers. So let's recap. You're the baby. You've oh. got uh, who's next to you, Curtis? Curtis. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Curtis is not directly involved in harness racing in a participant sense, but as illustrated by you, he is uh, just a technical wonder, can solve basically any technical issue whatsoever and has a very illustrious career in terms of videography and video production in harness racing. And then next is Anthony. Mark. Nope. Mark. Oh, okay. All right. Mark's a couple of years younger than Anthony. Right. Yeah. Okay. So Mark, obviously, obviously an award-winning driver, then Anthony, who then is Anthony. Uh, also uh, a good, <laughs> no matter what I say, I'm going to get in trouble yeah, here. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A great driver and trainer and uh, probably most publicly the, the co-creator and owner of uh, the stable.ca. And then we have Lloyd and Bobby. I don't even know who's older. They're around the same age. So <laughs> right, right. Kind of, uh, I, 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 maybe they'll be mad at me for not knowing, but I think they're basically the same age. So, okay. Fair enough. So, uh, Lloyd also not involved in harness racing, but he was kind of, uh, Curtis's mentor in the video production realm. Yep. And, uh, just like, just like Curtis could probably build a Zamboni out of scrap parts, you know, in minutes. A hundred percent he could. Yeah. He'll yeah. probably actually contact Curtis and make fun of him for how poorly his is built. So. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> And Bobby, Bobby is not a brother by blood, by uh, a brother by heart, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He's raised with us and uh, he, he's our brother. And uh, yeah, he's a, he's a blacksmith in PEI and uh, I don't get to see him as much anymore as I'd like to, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, always, always fun to see him when I go home. Okay. So you all grew up together 
in one house in uh, Char- Charlottetown, I assume. Yes. Uh, Cornwall. Yeah. Just okay. outside of Charlottetown. All right. And uh, I mean, in a sentence, what was that like? <laughs> um, it depends We're... which brother, depends which brother you ask, but uh, for I, me, I, it was, uh, yeah, for you, for you, hectic, chaos, <laughs> any of the above. Yeah. yeah. I've heard horror stories, you know, I don't, I don't know how, how true they are. Um, but I would imagine of all the brothers you would take, if you imagine a pile and you're on the bottom of the pile, I, I would think you would take the brunt of the abuse. Yeah, that's fairly accurate. We mm-hmm. were, uh, we used to have tag team matches, Curtis and I versus Mark and Anthony. And, and there, I think it's, I think it's seven years separates Curtis and a uh, Mark, um, uh, uh, might be six anyway but uh so you can imagine how that tag team match went and curtis was much faster than me because he was older than me so uh it was basically just a full-on two-on-one beating of me so <laughs> right but uh, that was a daily occurrence so there was that right all, all out of love of course right all out of love oh yeah certainly yeah certainly. okay all right so having said that i you have a very close relationship with all of them and um uh, you know, when the time comes on February 6th, if it is time uh, for you to make an acceptance speech, which I assume you will do in a similar fashion to what we're doing here right now, because of course it will be a virtual event because of the pandemic, um, I'm going to save you the aggravation of having to thank all of them for the contribution that they've made to your outstanding career uh, this year, especially. I'm going to give you the opportunity to thank each one for their own sort of individual um, contribution to your success. Because certainly what you all share is uh, you're all terrific uh, creative problem solvers, all in your own way, really. Uh, You're all very determined, all very dogged, um, very resilient, you especially having been (laughs) on the bottom of the back. Yeah, so so go through them a little bit one by one and and give me some sense of of what they've each contributed uh, to your work ethic. It's probably it's probably good to do this speech uh, now because come uh, come that day if if I do happen to win, I think I will. I'm kind of an emotional person and I mm-hmm. have a tough time not being emotional, so uh, it might be a little easier today. But uh, obviously- you can you can cry here on Barn Cat Trivia. No one's gonna make <laughs> no one's gonna make fun I'll, of you for I'll, that. I'll, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, you know you know who I work with and who my brothers are. <laughs> But uh, no, my, my, uh, I'll start with Curtis, I guess, being the closest. Uh, I don't even know what to thank him for or what, what he, he's done to uh, make my career the way it has been. But he's just been, uh, you know, a real friend and, and uh, we're, we're a real tight family. And, uh, you know, if I have any, anything ever go wrong, I can contact Curtis. And I do contact him when my phone's not working or my <laughs> laptop's broken or usually generally anything. But, uh, <laughs> No, he's uh, he's just a great person. Anyone that's ever met him, it's just loves him absolutely. He's definitely the the most well liked brother of the McDonald clan. You know, if you if you can find reasons not to like me, Mark, Anthony, Lloyd, or Bobby, but uh, Curtis, if you don't like him, you just you're just not a good human being. So there's something, uh, there's something wrong. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, um, yeah, I think he just helps me try and be more like him like be more laid back and more you know understanding and just a better person so uh you know i thank curtis for uh for making me like the way i am today definitely being two years older he was kind of my uh anthony and mark were gone so he was kind of like an idol to me growing up and uh yeah he's definitely made me a better person for sure that's really nice well thank you very much okay so you got the nice <laughs> you got the nice stuff out of the way now we get into yeah um <laughs> Uh, next mark is uh the second the third youngest i guess uh, next to myself uh he uh you know he was uh, he was him and anthony were kind of gone when curtis and i were younger they had moved out when they were young to go pursue their uh, driving and training and horse racing careers so uh mark uh you know it, we had a lot of fun when we were kids but we didn't curtis and i were kind of after our beatings we were kind of uh we were kind of on our own, but when I moved to Ontario and, uh, you know, Mark and Anthony both pushed me, uh, to, you know, to do what I'm doing now. And, uh, you know, this probably from the second I started driving, uh, Mark, he always had good advice, you know, he, and anyone that knows me or my brothers were, were really, uh, 
competitive, but we really, really torture each other, like really mm-hmm. lay it on heavy, like, you know, make fun of each other. And, and, it, and you know, it, it stayed like that, but it was never like that with racing. It was always constructive. If I made a mistake, it wasn't, oh my God, you're terrible. Oh my God, you're, they would say that when I was doing really well. But if I was actually having an issue or actually struggling, you know, he would be the first to say, you know, hold the lines like this or do this or try that or in post grade do this or, you know, like, and, and really just a, like my whole family's like that. You're going to hear a lot of the same stuff about them all because they're all, they've all been such helpful, so helpful to me and uh, all the way through my career and getting started. And, and even last year when I went to the States, you know, just see how, uh proud mark was i mean like bragging me up to all his buddies mm-hmm. it was it was really nice to see and uh like i said i'm gonna try not to get emotional but uh <laughs> i'm an emotional person when i think about how supportive and how lucky i am to have the family i have yeah well maybe i'll get emotional too we can uh, that won't that be a great debut for barn cat trivia a really a really fun event and uh and we're both crying right at the top of the show okay <laughs> all right. i'm not gonna okay. rule it out yet <laughs> okay fair enough all right okay so next up uh anthony would be my next oldest brother so uh anthony a lot of people don't know uh, is actually the reason i got into harness racing i uh i was in uh working or i was in college in pei my first year marketing and advertising at holland college and uh anthony was really short help uh as he usually is or <laughs> tends to be or well, he's not so mad now but uh back in the day he was and uh so he'd asked if i would come up for the summer and i'd never really like i'd been around horse racing my whole life but never really worked in it and uh he asked me to come up and give him a hand he was short staffed so i said i would and i left uh i was in a, a truck and trailer with uh, six people in it in a five five horse truck Gary Mc, or five seating truck Gary McDonald's truck with uh, Johnny McKinnon was with me. That's how kind of we got to know each other and got, got to be good friends. And, uh, and we were taking turns. There was like a bed in the back of the gooseneck of the trailer. So we were taking turns laying in the bed. I think I had $34 in my bank account and, uh, you know, loaded up and moved to, to go help Anthony. And uh, Anthony is just uh, anyone that's heard him speak or whatever. He was, he was very hard on me and like, uh, pushed me to be uh to be like kind of a perfectionist or not that I am I'm still not at all but uh he he always had big big dreams for me and and was the one who pushed me like he was the first first soon as I started to get a hang of it and doing well I actually went back home took I took a year I guess I came up for the summer then took a year marketing advertising then came back for good and uh, he, he pushed me really hard. He was like, you know, the, the second I started to enjoy it or, or get to, he's like, got to get your trainer's license. And we, he pushed me, good, set everything up, got that done. Then as soon as I started to get to where I, you know, he, he thought I was good at training or, you know, starting to like it. He was like, I got to get, you got to school one. You got to get like behind the gate. You got to get in the race bike as much as you can and you will get your driver's license and that's still at the time I was like I don't even really know if that's you know I was 23 I wasn't like I wasn't like a prodigy like Doug you know like driving when you're 16 and or 14 and winning fair races and so I I still wasn't sure that's what I wanted to do and and he he pushed me really hard to to do it and I you know obviously it's it's been my whole career and it's uh, I'm so thankful for that and uh, I know he takes great pride in uh and uh, bragging bragging about that and uh, saying he rescued me from the uh, being the fry guy at the cdp so uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah that no, sounds like, sounds like something he'd say yeah yeah you know and and, and like it's like we're we're all such supportive uh, we're such a close supportive family like anytime you know i have any kind of success anthony's the first one on facebook or social media bragging me up and and, you know, we're, we're all super proud. I'm proud of what they do and they've accomplished. And, uh, you know, I try it. That's, you know, one of my goals is to make my, my family proud. And, uh, you know, I've, you know, I had, had luck and hopefully I, I can win the O'Brien or uh, I'm already super proud just to be nominated. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully that does the trick for them. And obviously Anthony has played a, a major, major role in that. All right. So Anthony's bullheadedness, bullheadishness bullheadedness i think yeah anthony's sure. being so, a bully is yeah, well, is is definitely uh, a, 
a contributing sure. factor. And yes. I haven't touched into like the, like Mark and Anthony and Curtis, like, like I said, I, a little bit, but we're so competitive. Like we can't, we can't play monopoly without flipping the table over. Like we're, <laughs> so all of them, all of them contribute to that. Like we, <laughs> I hate to lose it. Like anything, like yeah. I can't think of anything. I've broken multiple controllers playing PlayStation, like <laughs> super competitive people. <laughs> I will have I'll have that image of the Monopoly board, just the the whole table just being flipped over and the pieces <laughs> just flying everywhere. I think yeah. that'll be ingrained into my brain for the rest of my days. Okay. It, it definitely could be. Yeah. yeah, I've actually seen it in in action. Not you, <laughs> but uh, I've seen the McDonald competitiveness at work. So Curtis, too, because Curtis is a little more. He's, oh, he is. He It takes a bit, but he you know, he doesn't like to lose at anything. No. He's definitely like more laid back than the rest of us, but he's super competitive we've had it got the fire the fires in there we've beat the crap out of each other multiple (laughs) times starts off play fighting ends up bleeding so (laughs) (laughs) all right okay your parents must be so proud i know they are Uh, i know know that they are i know that they are all right okay so uh next we are on to lloyd bobby which one either Lloyd. let's pick lloyd i'm not sure (laughs) Uh, I think Lloyd, uh, Lloyd, actually, uh, anyone up here that knows me, I, I'm an avid golfer. I, I love to golf and, uh, and I've like to think I've taken a lot of money from my fellow drivers and coworkers. Uh, and I have my brother Lloyd to thank me for that. He was, uh, he took me, uh, when I was, I can't even remember. I'd have to ask him. I, I was probably six or seven years old and he used to take me to the golf course with him and, take me the range and then play nine holes and play. And he got me hooked really at a young age. And, um, it's a, it's a, it's a really hard sport to learn if you Mm. didn't pick it up when you were young. I play with a lot of people that started later and love it, but you know, it's, it's, it's a lot, you're not as natural. And, uh, so I, I definitely have Lloyd to thank for my, uh, my golf game, but he is like probably the most competitive of all of us. Like he, uh, he can't come up for a game of golf and he never beats me, but he can't come up for a game of golf without, Oh, we got to play for the house championship and the McDonald, the McDonald championship. And it's this, and it's that. And he's, you know, and he's throwing in little, like uh, I'm 17, he's changing the rules and he's saying, well, if, if I win the next two, then I'm the house champion. And he's, uh, it's, he just, he just manipulates the rules to whatever he wants to make sure that he's, uh, I think he's got a, four different uh sport protests on his phone by uh video game protests it doesn't matter what it is he is right. super competitive and uh creative problem solver oh he is definitely mm. creative problem mm. solver yeah. same with Curtis. he can fix anything i'm always mm. calling him with my fridge or my anything because he, he's in refrigeration now and uh, mm. he can and he is like curtis he can fix he could fix anything in the house with a you know a zip tie or a Right. A twist tie and uh, you know a plastic bag if he, he could get it done but uh <laughs> you know so they definitely and super supportive always first call first uh, you know he never never forgets a, a big day or uh, or anything and and always looking looking to uh you know pump your tires up and make you feel good about yourself so uh like i said you'll hear a lot of the same stuff for uh, over and over about uh, about all of us so that's all right it's all good stuff it's all good that's stuff right Okay, and finally, Bobby, Bobby the blacksmith. Yeah, Bobby, I don't see as much anymore, so I, so it's not quite the same. But uh, you know, he he, Bobby and Lloyd, they they raised you know, and Anthony, and Marcus too. But they raised Curtis and I. Mom and Dad were busy, and you know, there wasn't a, a ton of money to go around, so it was it was uh, you know by committee, that's for sure. And uh, <laughs> and uh, Lloyd and Bobby, and they, you know, they 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 kind of taught us the ropes at a young age and taught us to be respectful. And, and, uh, you know, and I, I remember, uh, Bobby and Patrice, they, they, uh, staying at their house all kinds of times when I was young and they'd push you, you know, always pushing you to do good things. And, and, uh, you know, every time I go home, Bobby's, you know, he's first one there strutting around bragging his brothers up. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's a good feeling. And, 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 you know, when I, I remember when Bobby came up and helped Anthony, uh, uh, when I was working at the barn and, and shooing, he shot, uh, he came up to shoot 20 or Anthony was behind and his blacksmith got hurt or something. And Bobby came up and did them all. And, you know, just to hear the way Anthony and, and all of us talk about each other, it's, uh, 
it's a really, it's a really, uh, we were, I like to think we were raised right. And, uh, you know, our parents, you know, did the best they could and we were, we were, we were certainly a challenge, but, uh, you know, all my, all my brothers have taught me uh, to try and be a, a good person. Uh, you know, obviously we all make mistakes and we all do dumb stuff and we're all, you Human. know, flawed. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to do the right thing and, uh, you know, trying to be a good person, I, I definitely, I try and be as best I can, but, uh, you know, I have my, my mom, my dad, and my brothers to thank for that for sure. Yeah. Well, the proof's in the pudding in terms of, uh, Freddie and Gail's uh, breeding, I think. I think uh, they've thrown <laughs> all good sons. So um, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much Gail's going to like that analogy, but uh, whatever. <laughs> we'll leave it there. You won't we'll like it, it at all. But <laughs> yeah, okay. She, she, she would got her so run down from her, her childhood. <laughs> right. she, she, she takes what she can get nowadays. <laughs> She's just thankful she doesn't have to share the washroom yeah. with five boys six boys uh, exactly yeah yes how many bathrooms were in your house um there was two but oh, uh, there wow. was really one that works most of the time upstairs oh. one was never working properly so uh, <laughs> oh man the uh, downstairs bathroom definitely got a lot of use oh wow wow yeah kudos to gail and freddie all right well that that is that is an amazing uh family rundown for sure um and uh, I think you've been very kind to all of them. And uh, I, it's nice. I think, you know, hearing you talk like that, I think um, that that kind of summarizes all that's good in this industry. You know, there's, you, you, are, you were by comparison, as you said, a bit of a latecomer um, starting in your early 20s, whereas a lot of your contemporaries, you know, have been at it a lot longer than that. And I think, um, when we talk about the good things in harness racing and that feeling of community and camaraderie, those are a lot of the same things that you're talking about um, within your own family dynamic. But when harness racing is at its best, those are the things I think that we all enjoy the most about it. So. Yeah, big time. And, you know, I, I didn't even touch on my parents, but obviously a, a huge thanks to them and few, they, my dad and mom, they're number one supporters of all of us, but uh you know, I, I, uh, it's not just my family. I've had a lot of people within the industry, like you said, uh, like take me under their wing and try and show me the ropes. And now I'm kind of in a position where I, I can try and help the younger generation. And uh, I always try and, uh, you know, have kind words and, uh, and help the young, especially the kids from PEI coming up. I try and give them, uh, you know, as much, as much help as they'll have. Obviously people don't want to, you know, stepping on their toes all the time, but I, uh, try and try and pass on do what what the the uh the really kind you know people in this industry did for me onto onto the people I can now and uh, there was a lot that that helped me along the way for sure right pay it forward yeah that's right right okay all right well this is the uh part in the program James uh where we come to truth or trivia so you have the option <laughs> <laughs> I can ask you a trivia question that I've crafted just for you and you can answer it to the best of your abilities. Uh -huh. um, you might do well and get it right, or you may not succeed and fail. So there's and that. I feel the <laughs> yeah, I know you don't like it. Or uh, there's truth and you can give me the truth to a question that I ask you, but it has to be the truth. So the choice is yours. Uh -huh. That sounds a little dicey. Um, it is well, a little dicey. That's the fun of it. Can I get a hint on how hard you're going to be on me? Because sometimes the truth hurts. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, I don't think that it's anything that will potentially get you in any kind of, well, <laughs> I, I shouldn't say that actually. This might be a very contentious, this oh. might be a very contentious truth question. I don't oh. know. If I were well, you, I'd go with truth. I can... I can definitely say that all the players right now watching this are hoping that you'll go with truth because that's, that's human nature, but it's your choice. It's your choice. All right. Well, I'll suffer for everyone else that everyone else's enjoyment. Let me hear the truth. Awesome. Okay. That's what you do when you're at the top of the ranks. You <laughs> suffer for everyone else's enjoyment. That's right. Okay. All right. So this truth, this is a bit obscure, but this is, this is something that I need clarified for my own sanity. So you know, we are talking about a restaurant here that's in PEI, and I know we have some American viewers who are going to like, they'll be like getting ready to tune out. But listen, there are a lot of people 
in harness racing from PEI that are, uh, you know, smattered throughout North America. So even viewer, player, if you're out there and you're listening to this, you definitely know someone from PEI, no matter where you are. And if you know someone from PEI, you have definitely heard about the Canton Cafe, Mm -hmm. which is in Charlottetown. It's on Queen Street in Charlottetown. And it is the home of, and I'm using air quotes, the best egg rolls in the world. I have been hearing this for years from Islanders. In fact, I have known some Islanders who go to PEI and then smuggle these egg rolls back in their luggage on the plane. It's out of control. And the question I have is, are these actually the best egg rolls in the world? Or or will you concede that it is actually just a matter of a homecoming? It's the fact that they represent home. It's a comfort. It's something, yes, that you really enjoy, but they are not, in fact, the best egg rolls in the world. Before you answer this question, truthfully, I want to read a few Google reviews of the Canton Cafe. (laughs) If you like egg rolls, then good to go, but all else is a pass. Best food in town, love their egg rolls. The egg rolls are also fantastic. I have gotten entire orders of just egg rolls before. This seems to be a theme. The very best egg rolls anywhere. This place has the best egg rolls on PEI and awesome food as well. So at this point, I'm starting to think, okay, maybe maybe I've missed the whole point on this. Maybe these, maybe these are actually the best egg rolls. Uh, finally, they turn to their old recipe for egg rolls, best ones in PEI. Mediocre food and prices too high for what you get. Great egg rolls though. <laughs> See? And then finally, I, I found this one, which I thought maybe is where the truth lies. Recommended for their egg rolls, or maybe it's the homemade plum sauce. Mm. Well, so that, that's what your contemporaries say about the Canton Cafe egg rolls, I would love your honest take on whether you think, so to be clear, if you answer, when you answer truthfully to this, if your truthful answer to me is that, yes, they are the best egg rolls in the world, you should be prepared. Like saying that means you're going to go toe to toe and you've gone toe to toe with many people physically, mostly in your own household, many times before you would have to like go toe to toe with like Chef Ramsay to argue that these are actually the best egg rolls in the world. So James McDonald, are the egg rolls at the Canton Cafe on Queen Street in Charlottetown, PI, actually the best egg rolls in the world? Okay, I'm gonna disappoint not only you, my entire family when I give you the truthful answer. Okay. The truthful answer is I really, until recently, uh, a few years, that is, I really, really dislike Chinese food. And when I was a child, my brothers were absolutely obsessed with the Canton and Chinese food. It's like an old home week tradition. And I would go with them to support them. But I have never in my life had an egg roll from the Canton. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever had an egg roll anywhere in the world. I will try one because I've, my, my taste buds have expanded and I'm not like just the chicken nugget kid anymore. Right, right. But if I'm being 100% honest, yeah, I trust my brothers who swear by them and get crates of them, or not crates, but freezer loads of them sent up to them so they can freeze and eat whenever they want. They do? So I'm gonna, they I'm gonna take their, I'm, oh yeah, oh, they get all the time, mom sends up or people are coming from PEI, they get a cooler full of them, frozen egg rolls so they can put in the freezer. I, I, my mom and dad just came up recently. I, I would be shocked if they didn't bring egg rolls for Anthony and Mark and or Anthony and Curtis. Okay. But yeah, if you're going to PEI and you're looking for the best food anywhere probably in the world, you have to go to Maid Marion's. It is, it is a staple. <laughs> of PEI and the steak sandwich is to die for. Aren't you crafty? So the way you're you're wiggling out of actually answering (laughs) this question is by entirely throwing me a curveball with a whole other restaurant on PEI that you're now going to claim is the world's best 
-hmm. when I don't actually have any opportunity to substantiate it with anyone else. Well, you can go on the reviews and it'll probably be the same. Greatest steak sandwich on the, the planet. And the milkshake, oh. It, I don't know if it brings all the boys to the yard, but it brings me to Maid Marian's. All right, well, fair <laughs> enough. Where, where is Maid Marian's? Is it in uh, it's, Charlottetown? It's, it's, yeah, Charlottetown. Just, it's just a couple minutes from the track. I'm not sure the exact the road is. I can get you there, but I don't okay. know the road is. And is it fair to assume, like, are you breaking the silence on this egg roll mm -hmm. thing? Like, do you think that the rest of the Islanders have just assumed that you have had the egg rolls? Yeah, for sure. Oh, so yeah, this is, sure. this is actually a huge. I recommend it to people all the time. <laughs> I've never had it. So, <laughs> so this I is actually, spare, this is actually a huge expose. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was All a pretty, right. I was a real picky eater when I was a kid. So, uh, I, which is weird, but Fair it is enough. what it is. All right. Well, you know what? I didn't get the truth, but I did get a huge scoop. And that is that James McDonald has been lying about the egg rolls. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> for all his I days. apologize to everyone I've recommended the egg rolls to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can, uh, would they take away an O'Brien award for that kind of, <laughs> would that be uh <laughs> Would Let's that be behavior, the, uh, yeah, behavior unbecoming to racing yeah. or whatever in the, uh, could be. yeah. Okay. All right. Could be. We'll just keep it between you and I. That's right. All right. Well, James, this has been uh, very enlightening, very entertaining and even a little sentimental. So um, That's right. thank, thank you very much for uh, sharing uh, everything with us. C huge congratulations on your year, no matter what happens on uh, February 6th. And um, we wish you all the best. Well, thank you so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure. And uh, thank you for all the kind words. I really appreciate it. All right. Take care, James. Thank you very much.